What's up, everybody? Here to give you guys a review for I Love a Hip Hop Miami Season 1, Episode 7, titled I'm Done. I do want to apologize for the extreme lateness of this video. Uh, like I said, as you know, that I was working hard to um, put out the trending topics video, which I didn't go to sleep until like damn near 2 in the morning. Well, 2 in the morning, so it was Monday at this point. <clears throat> then put that out to wake up that the last video was pretty much like banned worldwide so I had to go back edit re-upload that luckily I still had the file open and I didn't like close out of it because I wouldn't want to redo all that shit over again <clears throat> to upload that have to come back and then the fucking first video even though it um hasn't been banned a copyright claim have been hit on that so having to say work through the legality shit of that um and then also like um having to like it was a lot of work i had to get done forward because we had like i said i was given a four day uh weekend but yesterday kind of got taken from me because i want to do the video yesterday got to go in for a fucking meeting and shit uh, I have to go in on Monday, which I believe is what President's Day. So that's kind of why I have, you know, I, I was given an extra day, but I was trying to get all the work done because I go on Monday to teach a class, teach people how to use uh, UAVs and stuff. So been busy <laughs> trying to get all of that done, and I'm trying to get this video done now because uh, a friend and myself, she said Black Panther is uh, going to be at theater up here today, so trying to get this video recorded, edited, and uploaded before <laughs> we leave for that, so trying to do this shit now, so all that being said, I'll say like the first half of this episode was like boring and shit until like the very little end piece where it picked up so I'm gonna run through some of this shit <clears throat> and then we'll talk at the end so um you got Trick and um his boy named uh Krana, who's a producer pretty much tell he rehashes everything that happened with the uh, last encounter with him Trina Joy and Don and pretty much like you know what I want to have a um divorce party so and he keeps saying that he will divorce her when he's ready. So I'm like, well, I guess the ball is in his court. The thing that I will say is, you know how sometimes people like try to put on that they doing some cooking and shit, and I'll talk about one a little bit later. Trick can cook. <laughs> like you see the motherfucker. Now the thing that kind of threw me is he didn't have the brown paper bag when he was doing the chicken, though. Y'all don't y'all don't know what I'm talking about though. But he was using the grocery store bag, and I, I peep game. I saw what he was doing. Like the boy was in there getting it. I wish I was up in there. I, I think I gained about a good ten pounds just watching all the fryation and shit that was going on. But I was here for it. He really needs to try to figure out a way to have a cooking show. Maybe not necessarily Food Network, but probably. Uh, food. I think it's Food Channel because they actually have a show called Bitch in Kitchen. So if you got a show where that's your fucking title, you could have somebody as uncensored as Trick Daddy. I'm just saying. Hopefully Trick can get him a fucking you know cook you know cooking show. I'm just saying. He, he look like he could show y'all ass how to you know do some cooking up in the motherfucking kitchen. Yeah. So we got Bucky and Scrappy. Now this is the, he gives her a dry ass salad. I ain't see not a lick. A fucking um salad dressing nowhere. So Scrappy, you you might need to enroll and <laughs> trick that as you know, uh, culinary class. What what the hell? Mm, okay, that was, my, that was my friend. You know, text me shit. My B. So their whole thing is they want to work on leaving the past in the past. So <laughs> there's that. We have Amara and, uh, you know, Mama Adam. And they had a strip club, which I'm just like, okay. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. I don't judge. I don't. Because, I mean, even, be well, first and foremost, I never really had that type of relationship with my father. But I do know that some um, 
you know, like I said, men, we have those relationships with our father. We're just like, fuck strip clubs. So I can't really sit here and fault her for being in a strip club with a mom. I was just like, okay. <laughs> Shit, but I was kind of looking like, what? what is it? What? <laughs> it, 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 was, it was a joy to watch. But her mom feels that her career hasn't popped because of, you know, money. That, you know, it's so much that goes into it and... I don't I don't know if Amara at this particular point in the show if she's independent or if her mom is saying for her to cross over to the American uh, charts and market that is going to cost a hell of a lot more. So I'm like, OK. And then her mom is already working in a kitchen and she's like, OK, well, I'm going to get another job to better help you. Because it's breaking her heart to see that Amara is not, I guess, flourishing as quickly as she should. Amara is just like, no, no, you're not going to do that. I don't want you to have a sit here and put yourself out there. And she went so far as to say that it's hurting her. Well, not hurting her, but it's upsetting that, <clears throat> you know, she's um, putting on this farce, the facade, the industry facade. And I'm actually glad she talked about this, where it's just like, pretending to be someone that she's not wearing clothes that she ain't got the money to pay for amongst all this other stuff and I'm glad she said that for aspiring people to understand that a lot of artists that you like really ain't got the money that you think they got and you know they be stunning these videos and shit and you know it's just motherfuckers in their regular everyday life be you know what well, we ain't finna go down that rabbit hole but her mom says that okay she's not gonna get a second job now, what I will say is I'm not saying that Amara is not putting in that work, but if there is room for you to get a job, just saying, not saying, just saying. So we got Kiara and Nikki. Kiara is rehashing everything that's been going on with her and Gunplay. And, you know, Nikki uh, says that she really didn't want to bring this up. Because she doesn't know how it's going to come out. But she was with Gunplay the other night. And when she mentioned Kiara's name. You know it really threw him. And he just left. And Kiara's just like. It's weird that you say that. Because you know he's been out late a lot. And he's been saying that he's in the studio. And I even found you know. Um, some money kind of folded up and whatnot. And it has some a powdery substance on it. So I think he may be using it again. And she, I meaning Kiara, is trying to figure out, you know, almost kind of like where's that breaking point? Like where's the point to give up? Because she just doesn't want to give up on him. She wants to fight for her relationship, which is admirable. And like I said, she just doesn't want to give up on gunplay. But Nikki, even though I'm not really feeling her, said some real shit. And this is when you actually need a friend that's going to give you the real. And was just like, don't lose yourself in the process. So when trying to save him, don't lose who you are. And I was just like, that's some real shit. So you got Joy and Don. Joy is at her salon just playing in Don's hair. Ain't really styling shit, but okay. Um, a stripper comes in, gives her uh, this big old rectangular thingamajiggy package. And it's pretty much a, almost like a billboard, if you will. A nice blown up post and shit says, I did, I do, wait, no, no, I do, I did, I'm done, divorce party, trick daddy, all this other stuff. She feels a kind of way about it. <laughs> Don is just like, that is messy. And it's quite petty. It is, it's, it's quite, quite petty. And is that somewhat of a bitch move? Yeah. Can I be too bad at trick? No, not really. Now, the fact that he invites her, I'm just like, I bro, <laughs> you doing the most. You are doing the most. But we can't pretend like Trick Daddy ain't sitting here, you know, bringing us something on the show because Trina ain't giving us shit. Um, Don says to her that Trick Daddy has said that she left when he got lupus. Now they have been separated somewhere between three and four years. She says that he was diagnosed with lupus well over 10 years ago. So she left after that fact. But she did say that him getting the lupus and whatnot, it changed him. So the person that she married is no longer there. Yeah, yeah, rah, rah, woo, wop, de woo. 
I don't really feel away. Like I still feel like you know Joy is on some shit. Only for this reason, if you really wanted a divorce, you would have been got a divorce. You would have done what you needed to do to get a divorce. But the fact that you separate yourself from him, you are still dating other people while you are still married. Just saying. Which, I'm not even to say and pretend like Trick probably didn't cheat on her, but, I, but I'm merely making a point where it's just like, why go through the, through the process of separating, getting another place, all this other stuff, when you could have just divorced and just been done with the shit years ago so I can understand trick whole thing is well since you want a divorce well fucking we're gonna do this shit on my terms seeing as how you have drugged this shit out this far I do understand trick I, I, I understand his mentality as fucked up as you know this shit and messy this shit is I, I, I do understand it so she's gonna go so we got Veronica and Steph now Veronica is telling her version of events which I can't be too mad about because a lot of people do that. I try not to do that. As much as I want to embellish a story, I tend to tell exactly what I did the whole night because a lot of times I be wrong and shit. I know this. Some, I overreact to shit and sometimes I let my emotions get the best of me and I will either say or do something where even in my mind I'm saying I probably shouldn't but I still fucking do it anyway. You know, but she pretty much says to Steph, oh, well, you know, JoJo go tell me, you know, I'm a millionaire and you from the hood. And it was just like, no, no, that's not what she said. She says, I am a millionaire. It will cost me money to slap someone like you. So slapping you will cost me money. But that doesn't matter for you because you have nothing to lose. So we're in two. So I understood what JoJo was saying, but I didn't appreciate how Veronica is trying to spin the story. But of course, she's going to spin the story and spin the narrative, so it all favors her. We know how this shit works. Mm. So Trina comes in, and you know, Veronica is kind of just like, oh my, like literally, just kind of like in awe, and even said that you know. You did me a song with my pay me song, which I never heard. Like I've heard them play snippets of it, and part of me wants to watch it. I just don't want to give Veronica the fucking like I want. Like, I want to watch the video and hear the song, but I don't want to give her the views. <laughs> so I'm probably not gonna do it. Just saying. But um, Trina, I'm sorry, it's a lot going on right now. Trina was try was saying to her that. You know, her people gave her a lot of pushback for that because of her use of the N-word. And from what I understand, it's not like she said it once. It's that she said it many different times. And if y'all remember with uh, J-Lo and Ja Rule when she did, I believe it was the I'm Real remix, I believe it was. She said the N-word one good time. And trust me when I say everybody clown the fuck out of her ass. So, Veronica, whole thing is... <clears throat> She pretty much told Trina, I don't owe anybody the conversation or the discussion as to why I feel why I can say this work. And she fe also feels that because I was, because I am from over here, that entitles me. And I shouldn't have to sit here and say that my great grandmother's from Africa, which, you know, a lot of our, you know, great grandparents are from Africa, sweetheart. But I digress. And in her uh, green screen, in her confessional, you know, she is saying that when she is in a group amongst whites, she is treated as an other. And then she tries to, you know, tie in the whole, you know, nigga. And then even go so far as say, you know, the people in Puerto Rico <clears throat> who don't have, you know, power and all her stuff, you know, they niggas. And it's just like, what you're not going to do is sit here and take a incident that is still very much still ongoing and try to use that to back up your fucking point you're not going to do that now my thing is this i'm not going to tell somebody <clears throat> what they can and what they cannot say there's freedom of speech but i as on my trending topics video part two when i talk about when keeping it goes keeping it real goes wrong you have freedom of speech you can say whatever the fuck you want to say but understand that for every action there is an equal or greater reaction so there will be a reaction for what you say but i find it to be weird how you are unsympathetic 
to Amara's plight with what she's going through. But when somebody challenges challenges you on the use of the N word, now all of a sudden you know you you have such strong ties, which is just one of those like miss me with the bullshit completely, fucking completely. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna spend more time. The only thing I'm gonna say is I'm upset with Trina Light, even though she ain't gave shit to this entire fucking show. This actually was an opportunity for her to sit here and literally get her the fuck together and make this shit clear plain as day but she didn't you know and here's the thing I, I, y'all say what you want mariah carey's very black <laughs> i ain't heard her drop the n-bomb yet buggies with don and calls a meeting with um nikki and kitty now there's this you know fence between them but you can tell that bucky is on one now there, she's trying to figure out the disconnect. Nikki, and I understand what Nikki said. Her whole thing is there was a commotion, a whole lot of rah rah rah. I thought that something was happening to my daughter, so that's why I jumped in. And you know, Bugs was like, "Okay, Mama Bear, protect the hook up. I got it." But then she directed her attention to Kitty, and it's just like I'm tr like I don't understand where you came in. And she was like, well, you know, you came in with your friend, so I came in. Well, you came in with your friend and jumped my friend, so I even had the eye. She was like, no, 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 We did come in there, but I was talking to her, asking her questions. Your friend threw the drink first, which caused all of this. And then Kitty's just like, well, that's my friend. I'm going to ride for her. Now, I, I really, really wanted Nikki, Katie's mother, to, like, check her ass and be like, no, no, that's not how the fuck this shit work. If your friend throw a drink, then let your friend fucking fight. Unless the additional friend, who was Liz, jumps in and puts her hands on your friend. Should be the only way you get involved. But hey, this is some, some, some I, don't, I don't know. I, I want to say it's some hood type shit, but maybe it's just some new age shit. But I, I don't really fucking know. I'm, whatever. But they really don't get to no resolve. Buggy brings up uh, Scrappy's Instagram, all that good shit, and then you have niggas just like, well, I'm a balls, I'm making my balls, that whole thing. So I guess Bucky got what she needed. Amara is working on her music. Young Hollywood hooked her up with an interview. Um, the uh, radio host is like, how did y'all hook up? And it's just like, again, Young Hollywood, he just talks. Literally just digs himself a hole whenever the fuck he talks. And Amara is giving him that look of, you better shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, right the fuck now. Uh, the lady asked her, like, do you have any music on you? Amara went in her shirt. Well, went in her uh, her bra and pulled out a thumb drive. And I just said to just like. But at the same exact time, if y'all watch Forrest Ross. She says this a lot. I do too, but I know that you know if I say this, people are gonna immediately think for his rocks. But when you stay ready, you never gotta get ready. And she and the model even said like, "I stay ready." <laughs> and I'm gonna look for the song. I, I forgot to write down the song, but it was one of them. Like I was, I was sitting back at a group too, just like, "Okay, all right, <laughs> go ahead about her." Now I know a lot of people are just like, "Why the fuck are you working with Young Hollywood?" I think I understand why. As fucked up as it is, first and foremost, for some people who don't really work in business, or, you know, like, and I'm just going to be, I, I got, I'm not going to go into, you know, specifics, but if you don't work in certain type of businesses, certain type of industries, there's politics that are involved. And you know what? Sometimes you have to sit here and eat crow. You don't have to, but if you choose to, it will make things simpler. And I think for Amara, if she just teams up with Young Hollywood, she can get what she needs from this motherfucker. And once she get on, she can be like, you know, sayonara. If not, then yes, her mother's going to have to continue to work harder to sit here and try to help her get her career off the ground. I think that's what it is. I can't be mad at her for that. Because, I, I mean, here's the thing. To quote Maddie from, you know, the Queen's Court. Get money, bitch. So, I mean, do what you got to do to secure the bag. You know, it's just like a lot of us. I work, well, not currently. I've worked, like, when I left North Carolina, I was working with somebody that I did not like. And he, and I'm pretty sure he still watches my video because he found my channel. When I try to keep working everything separate. He knew I didn't like him. He knew it. 
<laughs> there was a time that I'm pretty sure he didn't like me. But it's one of those where we weren't friends, but because I was his supervisor, he was my subordinate, and we had other people that we had to take care of, I had to sit here and suck up the fact that I don't like him because we have a job to get done. I am still a professional at the end of the day, and I am much older than this young man, and I'm older than all of those that we are over, so, hey, it is what it is. Got to suck it up to, you know, get to the end. And a lot of people realize or don't understand that you don't have to like somebody to work with them. You don't have to like somebody to sit here and get that bag. You don't. So I understand. Is it right? That's for y'all to figure out. Um, The divorce party. Speed through this. Bucky pops up because, damn it, we, I just been sitting here running it with y'all. Let me get through this shit. I'm, I know we don't talk this long. Y'all know. Bucky pops up on Scrappy, uh, pretty much, long story short, you know, she's like, you know, well, I'm into it with these bitches, and he just like, because he don't know, so he's just like, okay, well, what's going on, like, why y'all are at odds and whatnot, and she explains it, and she's like, well, you can't work with them, because if you was at it with a motherfucker, I would dead that shit right then, and he's just like, it don't work like that, now, I get the whole loyalty thing and everything, but, this is a big ass but fucking police unless y'all marry that's the only way you can sit here and tell somebody who they can and who they can't work with and depending on the person if you are married to they probably will look at you like you fucking crazy where it's just like I'm gonna work with whoever the fuck it is that I'm going to work with because at the end of the day money talk bullshit well, we got bills to pay amongst other fucking things so get over the now but again, is levels to this shit, their situation, no. And my thing is, if Shay is willing to sit here and throw away this right here, you know, for a lackluster relationship that ain't going nowhere with Scrappy, you get what the fuck you get. He said, I didn't say if I was or wasn't going to work when she was like, well, if you do, I'm going to give you my ass kiss. That's her thing, I'm going to give you my ass kiss. Uh, Joy walks in, Trick is being very disrespectful and spiteful and whatnot. Calling, you know, her whole, you know, talking shit about his other baby mamas and whatnot. All the girls in attendance are clapping it up with him just like, uh, okay. No self-worth there. But those two talk, and long story short, he told her, okay, I'm going to pay for the lawyers and whatnot. But he reiterates, I'm going to sign the papers when I get goddamn ready. Ended with gunplay. Uh, he has a song called Stove Steel Hot. Kiera pops up. We all can see this man is tweaking. Either he is high, he is coming down from the high, or just the residual effects of the high. Don't know which one it is, but it's one of those fucking three. And you know, like, he is doing the sniffing and shit, and I sniff a lot too, but like I said, for those of y'all who watch me, y'all know I have a deviated septum. It's in uh, this nose right here where it bulges out or whatnot. But, like, it's one of those where, like, he is doing this, he's tweaking amongst other shit or whatnot, and she's trying to talk to him. It's like, you need to quit this. And he's just like, if I quit this, you know, who gonna pay the bills? I pay for shit around here. He's going to fuck off. And he even lunges at her several times. Now, I don't know if it's because Kia from Chicago, Kia would look like an alpha. I, <laughs> I know women that fight dudes. I got a cousin that fight dudes. I just saying. So she look like she fight dudes. <laughs> Cause she ain't flinched not one bit. She just stood her ground. It was one of those where I, she was almost looking like, I wish the fuck you would. <laughs> the scene was not funny, but like watching how she was. You know, reacting, I know women like that where it's just like, I wish the fuck you would. Like, that whole, I'm sorry. Back to this. And she pretty much tells him just like, either you're going to get help or I'm out. And she was like, get you a girl that will tolerate this. You ain't the only dick here. And he was like, we'll go get you some. And then like, picking up chairs, throwing the shit. I'm just sitting there just like run <laughs> like I'm looking at Kia I'm just like baby run <laughs> like 
great. Like I, I feel that she can handle herself, but when you're dealing with somebody who is on drugs and especially a very strong control substance like cocaine, crocodile, meth, shit like that. They get a superhuman type of strength and all this other shit, and it's just one of what you just don't want to be around it. So that was the episode, and it seems like some more shit's finna come out next week. I'm keep all the way one hundred with y'all. I wasn't expecting to talk to y'all for like twenty five fucking minutes, but I done did it. I ain't got shit. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully this this makes up for not getting this on time. So I do apologize. I am working on my trending topics right now, getting everything. If y'all have anything y'all want me to talk about, please send it in to me. I will not be talking about the Queen's Court. I think more than enough people have talked about it, so I'm not going to. But that's all that I have. So, um, if I do end up watching Black Panther, I may give you guys my reaction to that, maybe. But the next video should be Married to Medicine, followed by my trending topics. So, I'll see you guys later. Peace.